you can re oh i had my sound off the entire time oh such a knucklehead so let's recap <laughs> i'm brian bentley this is the modeling <laughs> this is the mod this is the wednesday night modeling stream i'm so rusty one time and i'm off uh, this is the Wednesday Night Modeling Stream. My name is Brian Bentley. I'm the department head of modeling here at CG Spectrum. Uh, for all your modeling needs, go to cgspectrum.com. So you've seen me bouncing around, and uh, this software is called Houdini. Uh, thank you there, there on teacher. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, technology, right? Uh, oh, so this uh, software is called Houdini. We're building this bird character over the course of... Actually, it's, it's going to end up probably being like a month or two because I generally don't work on 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 the uh, on this you know during the week like when I work on this in the streams like I'm basically just working on this two hours at a time so kind of just chipping away at this very very large project this character is is very large you know if you really wanted to break it up into, into a bunch of separate uh, projects you would have the wings would be pro one project the arms and legs would be one project the face is a project for texturing the the clothing is a project. Putting everything together is is its own project. So um, it's always good if, when you have a really big thing to build or really big task. Break it up into smaller tasks. It makes it much much easier to deal with. Um, so this is where I started out with the, the new hair. Uh, I subdivided my little piggy just so I got more data. Um, I did a poly paint. And I painted density here. So this is the density for the pig. So this is where the hair is going to grow. And then I also made it into a VDB for collisions. So I have out pig geom and out pig VDB. Um, I planted these guides by hand. And then those guides come out and I mirror them just so I have a full head of hair instead of just half a head of hair. And then those guides look up skin prim attributes. So let's do split paint top bottom and we'll do geometry spreadsheet. So these guys grab this skin prim UV and skin uh, skin query P and uh, yeah, so in the skin prim. So basically it's, it's finding where these roots are and where they're connected to the skin geometry. And then I build a also a rest point rest and all that goes into a hair generate. So the hair generate follows those uh, original curves. That's how I kind of filled out the hair. Now, I don't have to use this. Right? I might end up not using it, but it's in there if I need it. Um, and then I ran a, did a guide process. So this guide process does uh, just does some naturalization. So um, basically randomizes the length of, of uh, of each strand and then add some frizz to each strand. Um, here is where I determine the resolution of my curve. So up here, they're pretty sparse. They're about, I think they're about 16, 16 points. And then down here, they're around like 200. Now I need this amount of data because of what I talked about last time is I'm making coils. Coils are a way there are nature's way of packing a bunch of information into a small space. Like if you take somebody who has really, really curly hair, like their hair may look like it's this long, but if you grab it and pull it out, it's actually, could actually be, could actually be that long, right? So I need that amount of data to coil this, uh, to coil this piece. So I'm using these two orient nodes to, um, to view the orientation of of my uh, of my coil and that'll become if you if you want more explanation on that like this is probably the hardest part uh is the these two guys getting this orientation right so if you really want to know how that works go back to the previous um previous streams and i explain all that so it's a it's a quaternion that you know makes a coil uh in this attribute expression uh i'm just blending between those two objects so here here and then uh, this is where the magic happens down here is this club curl. Bam. So that's where these become actual coils. So they are coiling around that same data. And then once that's done, everything else becomes pretty simple. So I have a P scale on here to control the size of my coils. And then I have a run a color 
based on uh, curve U. So here, if I'm taking curve U, so at the end it's light, at the tip it's dark. Uh, let's see, what's this? I'm running a measure. Uh, so this is a further perimeter. Um, so this is for my UV mapping. And then this is a line that gets swept along each one of those coiled curves. So that's what we get like this. Okay. And then I put a normal to smooth everything out. And uh, I promote these attributes for my texturing stuff over here. So basically for my texturing, um, I'm making a V length and a U length, and that's getting pushed up into uh, my detail. So over here, if I look at my detail, I have an overall U length and an overall V length. And then here, I'm just normalizing that. So if my U length, so uh, V, uh, UV, so U is X, so my U is one, and my V is 86. So these things are about 86 units in length, which is really, really long. It's like 86 meters. Now this head is gigantic, right? Like it's, it's, this pig head is almost two meters across. So that's almost a six foot tall <laughs> uh, pig head. So we may have to uh, change some settings when we, when we put this back on, on our actual head. But you can see like that's not, you know, that's 86 meters of data bundled into two meters of space, which is really crazy. Like nature's completely come up with this on its own. Well, not on its own through, through, you know, evolution and, and such. So then I have this, I have this hair out here, right? So what I'm doing to build my, build the texture is what I'm doing is I'm basically taking each one of these strands and I'm, I, I'm, I'm straightening it out. I'm building another object that, that, that's the straight strand. So if we look at this grid, um, so we look at my grid here. Oh, no, that's my hair generation. So this is my going to be my UV grid. So it starts out at one and one. All right, I put a UV texture on it. So that gives it some UVs. So that goes zero to one, zero to one. And then I take and I transform, I scale it up. So it's going to get really, 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 really tall. So it's probably about, let's see if I can, yeah, 86.23. So this thing is 86 meters in height. And it's reading that from my out hair. So it's looking at that V length in my out hair. So whatever I do to my hair up here, this will automatically adjust, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, so that's my low res. I'm going to bake onto this. So my high res, I made another piece of geometry here, and I grew hair off of that. And I made that hair, if we look at my length, is also the same V length. So that is also that 86.23. So I have hairs that go all the way up. And so I basically do the same thing. I do a guide process that kind of beats it up a little bit. Uh, I do a resample. And what is this doing? Uh, so I'm making some attributes. So a randomized attribute on, I think, it's, I think I put it on the points. Strand rand. Um, so this is just giving me a random color to each point on that expression. And then I'm giving this a color, which is that strand rand, right? So it's randomizing the color per strand. And this is, I'll use this now, it's, it's color, but I can use this to randomize um, lots of stuff. Mostly, I'm probably going to use it to randomize uh, the color of the hair, um, because your hairs aren't ever the same color all the time. So I can use these as like a hue shift um, to, to the overall color of the hair. And uh, I will use them also as a randomizing factor for, uh, for the roughness of the hair. So each strand of hair can have theoretically its own kind of individual roughness. So it's like these small bits of, of noise and, and incongruencies that make things look natural. Um, for as amazing as nature is, like no two leaves are the same, no two snowflakes are the same, no two strands of hair are the same. Now we can't do that in computer graphics, 
uh, but we can get as close as we can. We can try to add as much noise as we can. Okay, so then I wrap some polygons around this so I can render it, and then I put some normals on it, and then I ran that through my favorite new node, the Maps Baker. So this Maps Baker spat out, so I spat out a normal map, my vertex color, an alpha, and then I have these curve U, uh, strand bound, and strand ran. So those got spit out to uh, images. So we can see those if I go, let's go and grab that. put it in strand texture yeah so we have these guys here so there's this is my alpha channel this is my uh, that's my strand rand my strand color this is my uh, curve U. so dark at the bottom light at the top this is my normal map. This is my bounding box. Uh, and then I have a strand rand PNG. Yeah, here. So basically building all that stuff out as... And the reason it looks so kind of scraggly, like, like back, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, is because I'm taking that really long, you know, that super, super long... <coughs> strand and I've squished it down to zero to one so those those small undulations get squished squished down so I am losing a little bit of data in here because of that filtering but when I stretch it back out and put it back onto the, my strands over here right it just stretches back out so those those large kind of back and forth get pulled out it's like it's like pulling pulling a spring apart basically just with math um so yeah so that's where that's where i left off about last time and it was looking pretty good so i basically i haven't really done much so i'm still pulling the color just from uh just the vertex colors right so i don't have a color map so this is just kind of like a flat color um but i'm getting my alphas working really really well so if i turn this off right it looks very cg this is already just going back and forth between those two it looks very very natural um so I have an alpha, uh, I have my normals working, and then I have this, um, my strand rand in my roughness there. So if I look at that, strand rand, yeah. So I actually have uh, a true randomized color there. So I'm getting a little bit of breakup in that roughness as well. So I could maybe, mm, do I want to try that? Or do we want to try? Let's see. Let's see if I put my strand right in here. My color. Yeah, so that actually looks pretty good. Um, so I need to, you know, take the amplitude of that down, right? Because it's my darks are too dark, so my lights are a little bit too light. But you can see how that also adds adds a little bit of character character to it. No pun intended. Okay. So the next thing is, uh, so that's the review. I usually, I usually take about 20, 20 minutes to a half an hour to to uh, to review. Just in case anybody's late to the streams. Um, or if anybody's watching the streams, I never really know. Uh, can you demonstrate importing Maya curves for grooming for feature film artists? Yes, I can do that. Uh, I won't be doing that this, 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 this stream but uh, I will be doing that soon. So the cool thing about this process is that um, I'm actually using the same tools that you would use for uh, the same tools that you would use for um, feature film, like for, for strand base, right? Um, it, it's just, I don't have to do kind of like this post-process sweep stuff here. So I would just use what comes off of uh, off of here. So what I could do 
is if I did want to make this uh, more kind of like feature film more than games, I would just use these as guides. So I would do just I, this. So these clump curls, these guys become my. Uh, so it's like here, like this is geometry. So that's all kind of like a geometry workflow. If I wanted to come over here and do like a curve based workflow, I would just do another hair generate. So let's let's just let me just try it. See what happens. So I'm gonna do a hair generate. Okay, so the first one is rest skin. So that would be skin goes to skin. Guides goes to guides and animated skin. I don't have an animated skin, so rest skin. Yeah, so the hair generate is always backwards. You always have like this cross, which I don't know why they did that. I <laughs> I think they just did it and they were like, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. I don't I never know, <laughs> right? So, um, so what this is going to do is it's going to grow more hair off of that pig head this right so I don't want to grow unguided hairs I just want to grow that so you can see now I'm growing extra hairs along those lines so I probably want to do uh, maybe a little bit more influence radius to get those to be a little bit thicker so yeah so now I'm getting uh, so this is what you would render if you were going to render like visual effects based uh based hair right so this is just all coils and clumps clumps of coils so i can up my let's try up my density to like 2000 yeah so you get way way thicker and i'll probably need to bring my yeah for this the extrude tends to work a little bit better and let's see We want a pretty big radius on these. Maybe not that big. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to see, but um, like this, these are just all all curves, just a big mass of hair. So that would also work. Um, maybe don't want any clump crossover. Maybe a little bit of clump crossover to get it a little, a little bit more shaggy, and then I could also do like um, I could also do guide processes on this. So once I have that, I can do a. I'm gonna take. I'm just gonna steal uh, that one guide process that I have. So let's see. This is what is this? Skin VDB, skin guides so we have here curves and oh god I've made a mullet uh <laughs> so my my cut is probably really so set let's see let's turn off frizz and let's say multiply there we go Okay, so this is, I can just multiply a random, so my minimum scale uh, and my max, so one it will be, the, in, let's say minimum will be like 0.7. So some of them will get cut and some of them will, will stay. And then if I do my frizz, so that's gonna break up those coils a little bit. So you get something like this. So lots and lots and lots of curves but this is how this is how like kind of uh, not not kind of this is how uh, feature film animation uh, is is made uh, or is, this is how feature film animation hair is done this is how uh, 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 visual effects hair is done for like digital doubles and stuff like that so it's curve based uh, so you can see the process because it's just curves I don't have to worry about the orientation of of the hair because hair is only you know, it's one dimensional. It's a curve that moves in 3D space, but it has no width or thickness. It's just one one dimension that's like bent through space, which is actually pretty cool if you think about it, like very space-timey. 
Um, but yeah, so uh, I can actually, if we wanted to see this a little bit better, I can steal this color from over here too. Resample. I don't actually want to resample anything. I just want that curve view data. There we go. So yeah. So pretty cool. Like I think like this is um, like I, this blows my mind, right? The fact that I can with one, two, three, four, five nodes convert this from a kind of game-ish setup, like a geometry setup, to a curve base setup is pretty cool and like if you were working in a in a larger kind of like a larger environment <laughs> well thank you thank you uh this, I, I, I don't think i'm going that in depth but thank you very much I, I really appreciate it tell your friends make me internet famous please uh <laughs> some random 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 African American guy in Hong Kong spouting off about Hong uh, about uh, about Houdini. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you were in a in a larger kind of a studio setting, you could have a system where you it has both of these. So maybe this part, you know, goes to your animators so they, they so that they can so they can see uh, so they can see their hair hair volumes. Like if if she's gonna do this or like. Or if the person has to like put their head on something, they can see that hair volume, you know, in Maya or you know, uh, or you know, whatever animation software they're 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 using to animate, so they can see that hair volume, so they can get an idea for framing. This could go to also if if the hair is this big, that's going to change the way the can the, that you're going to frame the character. You know, you don't want to be cutting off the top of their head if they have really big hair, if that's part of their personality. Um, you want other parts of your your pipeline to be able to see this, uh, but you, what you don't want is you don't want send you don't want to send them this much information. So you can have you can kind of have your cake and, and and eat it too. So it's a it's a really it's a really nice system. Like I really really enjoyed it, uh, especially I was using I've used uh, XGen a little bit in Maya. It's good. It's a really good system. Uh, it's it's very very powerful. I I think it's a huge. It, it was a huge step forward. Like doing my uh, hair in Maya before Xgen was. Uh... Oh thanks man. Yeah, I really haven't seen many uh, African American, uh, especially for games, because uh, like I said, there's just so much information in there. Uh, for movies, it's getting better, but for for games, like I, I think I've seen like one one or two games that uh uh one or two games that's that's that that has african-american hair i think it was like one was called uh like valley of the gods and then uh, the other one had like had an african-american uh hair hairstyle called the division now unity not unity but uh, uh unreal is trying to fix this with their whole metahuman thing where you can actually bring in strand based grooms from X Gen, from uh, from X Gen, and from Houdini into uh, Unity, or not Unity. I keep saying Unity into Unreal, and you can actually simulate the the hair in Unreal. Now, the simulation isn't as robust as like Maya or Houdini, but you can get some simulation. You can also simulate your hair in Houdini or in Maya with you know vellum or or wires or whatever, and you can bring that data into Unreal Engine as well. Theoretically, that's what they're saying. So that's really cool, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 really cool. Now you're not gonna get 60 frames per second when when you do that, uh, <laughs> but um, if you're doing like offline rendering, if you're doing background characters, that's where I really think that this kind of like real time revolution is gonna come in. Like doing crowds, doing backgrounds, doing matte paintings, doing um, you know non super superhero work. Uh, if you can get that stuff done quicker, it gives you more time to do the hero stuff, which will make the hero stuff better. Um, time is like energy and matter. You can't make more of it. You can just shift it around. So the less time you spend on something else and you can still get it up to, to a certain speed, uh, you know, you could, you could move that somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> I always find it funny when I watch, especially when I'm watching this, the, the new kind of real-time ray tracing stuff and they're like, oh, 
well, we need to keep it up at 60 frames per second. Or, or they're like, they're like, oh man, I'm only at like 20 frames a second or 10 frames a second. And for me coming from visual effects and animation, anything under 10 minutes a frame is blazingly fast. So I will totally, I'll take, I'll take one frame a second. If, 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 <laughs> if it if it looks as good if it looks that good so this is generally how you do i mean there's there's more to it than this but this is how you would start start down that road um yeah okay so back to uh let me save this so i've done a bunch of stuff all right back to this guy let's go back to Um, so I was looking at this and it's still super uniform. Um, so like I was saying before, you always need to add, figure out ways to add in. When, when I, I don't want any computers to become self-aware. Like I don't need Weta H, you know, talking to the Atlas bot that, that, uh, you know, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, uh um what is it boston dynamics made and like they hook up with siri and alexa and take over the world i don't i don't i don't want that i don't want that at all um okay so uh bu -bu 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 oh yeah variation right so if i come up to my clump curl here um you can have so under each one of these uh, attributes, so I have like this amplitude here that's controlling the size of my coils. So what I want to do is I want to control, I want to control the size of the coil along that curve. So remember that coil is being controlled by this curve. So So what I can do is over here, by default, this is, says no override. So I can say, give me a clump attribute. So it will read whatever data is on those curves coming in and it will multiply against this number, right? So let me say that again. So this clump, so it's, uh, the attribute is called clump curl amp. So if it finds an attribute, on this stream coming in, because these are these are my um, these are my clumps here, clump curves. It will multiply against that. So what I did is I just made an attribute noise called clump curl amp. So watch what happens when I turn this on. Bam. So now I'm getting variation along the length. So it kind of does. Uh, where's my? Where's my uh... Um, really not much. If we look at the curves, before I put that clump curve amp, there's an orient, which basically controls the, the, how the, how the sweep works. There's a curve U, um, it's a curve mask, which I'm not using. There's P and there's width, which I'm also not using. And then on the primitive side, there's a ID, there's a skin prim, there's skin UV and skin query P. That's it. And I like this is what I really like. I think I've said this before. This is what I really like about the system is uh, in when you work in, in XGen, those XGen curves are like they're like a special um, they're a special object. If, 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 if anybody who's watching is anywhere familiar with like programming, they're a completely separate data type, right? So you have your NURBS curves in Maya and then you have your XGen curves. And you can, yeah, you can convert between them. Like you can convert your action curves to nerves curves and your nerves curves to action curves. Or your, I think you can even convert like surfaces to action curves. But, uh, uh, what is it currently? Uh, also note, call out to the question where addressing, call to, oh, okay, yeah. What attributes are on, on the curves? So not many. Um, so, the the issue with that is uh is that if i wanted to use modeling uh practices on my xgen curves i have to convert them into my nerves curves do a bunch of stuff to them and then convert them back into xgen curves 
anytime you convert stuff, there's there's possibility for you know uh, data leakage or data corruption or crashing and stuff like that. Um, with this system, these are just Houdini curves. Like that's it. They're they're just Houdini curves. Um, they're just Houdini curves, and they're stamped with the, kind of like these skin crims and stuff, where these nodes know to work on them and you know move them around and 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 do stuff to them in a very specific manner, which I think is really cool because I have that allows me to use all of my curve-based modeling tools on uh, uh, my, my, my curve-based modeling tools on my hair. So if I wanted to do like some wacky like hair growing animation, I could just put in a, let's do maybe like right before my sweep comes in here. My fav one of my favorite nodes is a carve. Let's plug that in there. So I can still use all of my modeling stuff. That's actually pretty cool. So that's my that's kind of like my favorite thing about it is that it's 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 not it's not hiding anything from you. It's not distracting anything from you. It's just curves. Um, and you could like, but theoretically. You could do a groom in Houdini, and then uh, you could spit out those 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 derbs curves as I think it's an IGES file, and you can bring that in Maya and then run that uh, run that through uh, run that through XGen if you wanted to. Like if you're really really like if you're if you're like let's say you're in a in a uh, in a pipeline that has to use XGen for whatever reason, but you want to leverage the power of or the the ability of uh, of Houdini. You can do that, right? You can always, it's, it's just, it's all just data. It's all just data. Uh, can we process for intersection of the curve geo penetration for simulation? Uh, whew, simulating curly hair is, would be interesting. Um, because it's so chaotic, well, for this, like if I was, I probably wouldn't simulate this. I would probably, if, if I was going to simulate anything, um, I would probably simulate these guys. And I probably wouldn't uh, collide them against one another. Like, they're so tightly packed, um, that collision model would be insane. And that detangling would be insane. Um, I'm sure there's somebody who's smarter than me who's figured out how to do it. If someone's out there and you know how to do that, please hit me up. Uh, but for now, I'm just doing, just doing modeling. Uh, so yeah, so what I would probably do is, uh, yeah, I would just I would just simulate these, and then that movement would trickle down into uh, into here. So like for example, um, instead of doing a simulation, let's just do a uh, let's just do a position noise on these. So we'll do a uh, attribute noise. And we'll do zero centered. So we could just run some some gentle noise through the hair like this, right? And so that, so let's say that that's my uh, my simulation, right? For whatever reason, um, that would all once again would all propagate down to this. So I'd have my hair kind of jiggling in the wind. And I could do more things to this to make it look not so uniform, but, you know, motion is motion is motion. It doesn't matter whether this motion is coming from uh, attribute noise or a vellum sim or, you know, uh, uh, joint animation. It's all the same. It's all the same stuff. Right. So that changes my curl amplitude. So 
If I can do that with my amplitude, I can also do that with my, my curl frequency. So my curl frequency is how tightly this thing is wound. So I did that as well. And that one really made, that one really sold it. That curl frequency really kind of like made it pop. Man, we're almost, uh, almost an hour and in. It's crazy. So fast. Yeah, so that's 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 that. That's uh that's pretty much what I did between the streams. And so these guys are um I'm just I colored them blue just to let me know that like that's what I did. And then the same thing I did here is once again like it's uniformly thick this way. So I did a attribute noise here on my P scale as well. So they get a little thick and then they get a little thin and then they get a little thick and then they get a little thin. So just adding more and more and more noise to make it look more, more natural. So you can see if I take all three of those, no noise, noise, no noise, noise, no noise, noise. So you can see it already just gets very, very, very natural looking. And then if we combine all that with our our texture baking we get something like this which looks still not completely completely photo real but it looks more believable we're inching toward the believability so that's what i'm going for this because it's like a big fantasy character she's got like these big claws and she's wings so i'm not going for photo realism i'm going for believability right i want the i want i want to your brain to be like oh, okay I'll, I'll 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 take that i'll take that i'm still a little skeptical but i'll take that that's that's what i'm going for Really, really good questions, Money Val ninety nine. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. It really makes the, the the stream go, at least for me, mentally better if I know that I'm actually talking to someone. <laughs> I was screaming into the void. Okay. Um. Let's see. What else can we do to this? Ah. Uh, so, a lot of people don't know this, and I might be shooting myself in the foot here because I usually don't do it. But, uh, Houdini actually has a compositing system in it. It's very primitive, but I think I can I can make myself a uh, like a color a uh, a color uh, color ramp out of this. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. So let's. Oh, this is so dangerous. <laughs> I could totally fall on my face, but screw it. Uh, fortune favors the bold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a cop net over here, and I'm going to take these uh these images that i made and i'm going to try to edit them and get like a better looking because i want those streaks back right like this is really flat um not physically flat flat my my my, my normal map is definitely doing its job but the color is just very 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 uniform so um let's Okay, so now I'm in my, my cop net, so let's composite view. And I want to bring in, uh, bring in a file. And I'm gonna go get, yeah, so I wanna get, uh, I don't really need my alpha, maybe strand color. I definitely want my strand curve view. And let's see what else. So I'm not super uh, versed in this. So what I usually do, if I'm going into a context, I'm in this compositing context, I usually just turn on my tool palette. So I can do color. Let's see. I want a... So generally when you're working, I'm used to working in Nuke. So generally when you're working in compositing, you make an effect and you mask it off. You make an effect and you mask it off. So the first thing I want is that that color gradient that goes from from zero to one so let's see mm -mm -mm. how would i do that i think i would do that as a color map from range to range if it is a right. so 
coming up right to this guy. Show that. And da, 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 da. so range zero to one. Okay, so that's giving me uh, uh, this image was generated from where. Also, please call out the question. Uh, which side effects guys would set up node hotkeys for the most used nodes? Um, I think you can do that. I usually just usually use stuff as bargain basement, um, and then. Uh, For merges, etc. Oh, these merges was generated from where? Okay, those these images were generated from this node, that maps baker node, right? So I have like my low res and my high res. So those were were generated last time. Um. So what I want is I what I want is like a like a remap color is basically what I want out of this. Um. Let's see. Probably be up in color. Almost everything I'm going to do is going to be in color. So uh, let's see. Do 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 do. Let me see. Map. Ooh, color red. Here we go. So I have this one, two, three, and four image override. This one is what. Twenty forty eight by twenty forty eight. So this one I want to be twenty forty eight by twenty forty eight. Nice and square. So that guy I want to be this brown. This guy I want to be that brown. And this guy. Oh, I wonder if I can just get rid of these. Oh, I can just get rid of them. All right, so I only need two. So I'm going to get rid of two and four. Let's say point one, two, and four. Do, 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 do. All right, you know what? This is taking too long. Uh, I'll probably figure this out on my own. I would generally do this in Substance uh, Designer and Substance Painter anyway. So let's just move on. Moving on. What I want is to... I want to implement in the last in this last hour, I want to implement this, this whole thing, into onto my character's actual head. So, like I said, this thing is huge, so it's going to take some um, some tweaking, but I think it will work. So, to do this, um, so Valk full, let's see here, proof of concept. And actually, what I want to do is, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. So, I took my original head, and I took it and I filled it, and I faceted it, and then I subdivided it. Basically the same thing as I did with the uh, the pig head. And then uh, I had a VDB from polygons here. So I'm just gonna steal all this. Did 
That's just an ant fan. Okay. So I'm going to steal this stuff. Control C. And I'm going to actually take, and I'm just going to make a new kind of part I'm going to pull from. Head for hair. Just paste that in. Great, cool. So there's my head. So I can always pull from this same spot. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to say uh, put a null here. Call this out. Head. Here, geo, and then I'll call this one out oh, head here BDB. Sweet. So now I can always just pull from the same, the same section over and over and over again. Okay, so these are two, these are like proof of concepts. I'm actually gonna copy my uh, my pig hair demo. And I'll just reuse that. So I'm gonna call this, uh, uh, feathers, wings, we'll just call it hair. So this is gonna be, my my hair in in earnest. Okay, so I'm gonna pop in here, and so let's start to to rework this. Um, so this is all kind of the pig stuff. Right. So I'm gonna do an object merge, and I'm gonna go get stuff that I just made. Head hair for hair. So this is going to be my geo. Cool. And that will be, and then this will be my BDB. Rock. On. So instead of out pig, we'll just say in geom. In VDB. So we'll just replace this goes here, that goes there. So the main thing about uh, replacing this stuff, so I don't need any of that anymore. So the main thing about replacing this is it's going to invalidate this guide room is completely gone now. So uh, let's see, I'm going to say reset strokes. So that should give me just this. <clears throat> so this is guide room. So what I can do is I can start replanting, uh, I can start replanting uh, head hairs. So I can, instead of screen brush, I can say ba -ba -ba, plant guides, enter, and I can start going bang. Right, so that hair is way too long, but that's the idea. So I'm gonna go bang, 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 like that. Now, uh, so let's see, uh, segment 16, uh, length, let's do 0.5, about half a meter. And I can bring this down. Yeah, that feels about the right length, maybe a little bit shorter. still too long. Like I don't want it super long, but I don't want it short either. So let's do 0.3, I think. It's gonna be the happy medium. 
Cool. All right. So, um, so I think if you want to see me plant guides, you can uh, you can go back and watch the other stuff. So I want to do something. I want to try to do something tricky, and I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, but we'll see. So what I've done, uh, I want to do what's called guide advection. So what I can do is I can make a velocity field. And this is kind of advanced. Um, and I've never tried it before. So we'll see if it works. But I have a plan. I have a plan. I went into the, the, the compositing thing with no plan. I have a plan now. So what the guide advection does is... Let's see, where's my epic pen? So, if I have a volume, like a piece of geometry, it goes something like this, or whatever, I can mark this part with something called divergence. Right? Uh, and so this can be, I think it goes from high divergence to low divergence. So if this is one, and this is negative one, it will... Uh, Houdini is smart enough to see the inside of this object and make velocity fields that will go through that object. And what it'll do is it'll say, oh, okay, I have a follicle point here, I have a follicle point here, I have a follicle point there. I'm going to grow guides that follow that velocity. Um, I've done it one other time before in a production. I had like a, it was a character, um, and he had like this really long, like big handlebar mustache. And I just couldn't get the groom to get that, that coil on the end. So basically what I did is I took it into ZBrush and I sculpted the shape of, of the mustache. And I brought that into, to Houdini and then I did this, this, this guide advection thing and it worked like a charm. It was just like, whoop, just went straight through the middle so I've never that I mean, that's really simple it's basically just a tube so we'll see if I can get this to work um, with like something a little more chaotic and a little bit more voluminous but that's the idea the um, the two nodes that I'm going to use to do this are uh, velocity um, I think it's velocity from volume velocity from surface Right, there's that divergence attribute. Um, so if I look at the uh, velocity volume, collision volume, if I look at the help for this, So the directional, the directional flow field is controlled by setting a varying divergence on surface geometry. So this here is surface. Uh, surface geometry. Velocity field is computed via pressure projection that flows away from high divergence and tw tw uh, into low divergence. So it flows from high to low. Um, and that makes sense, right? Like if you have, if you've ever like looked at like meteorology or whatever, or just taking like base level physics, if I have a high pressure system and a low pressure system, that pressure is going to cause velocity to move. Like, so if you think about like blowing up a balloon, Right? If I have a balloon, what's inside that balloon uh, is a high pressure system. Outside of that balloon is a low pressure system. So if I let go of the nozzle of that balloon and you put your hand there, you feel that, that air hitting your hand, that's velocity. Right? It's the velocity of the air moving from a high pressure system inside of the balloon to a low pressure system outside of the balloon. Um, so if you imagine I have little strands or whatever, like little like floaty bits in there, and as they leave that balloon, they draw a line, right? That's that's what this is kind of doing. I, I that's the best analogy I can think about it. Uh, think about it for. Um, so let's see, do, 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 divergence. Yeah. So that's what that that's one one system we're gonna use. And then the other one is in the hair tools. So let's look at the system. 
care. So there is an advex, I think it's guide skin attribute lookup. Okay, generate. Where is it? Collide with the guide advex here. And you can even see in like the little uh little icon here, it's like these two little arrows pushing this thing around. So what this is going to take, it's going to take guides, it's going to take skin, it's going to take skin VDB, and then over here it's going to take a velocity and collision VDB. So this is outputting, should be outputting a velocity VDB. So, um, so that's that. So, um, so last week um, I went into ZBrush. and grab and made this. Uh, like allowing point to move. Uh, I'd like to know more about evecting points and orientations. I think like allowing a point to move from a surface to float up and still be able to art direct their rotation. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's more particle stuff, um, which I don't really get into, but if you're into that sort of thing, you should watch uh, Daniel Horgan's uh, um, Houdini um, Houdini stream and he gets into all that stuff so uh, yeah so this I made this so I basically exported the let's see do, 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 do. so I exported the head and uh, I brought it in the ZBrush and I did I just did a simple extraction and came up with just sculpted out this hair so um, there's plenty of ZBrush uh, tutorials out there like you can learn so much from everybody and people who are like way way uh, yes Daniel is on this channel he is he is uh, I, I can't remember when he's on but if you go back and look at the channel then uh, you can he's got his own playlist just like I have my own playlist so you can go check him out very very good stuff um so I sculpted this very very rough hair shape like this is the hair shape I wanted um, I also sculpted out uh, a hairband, so I'll probably export that eventually and bring it into into Houdini and kind of fit that to to the hair. So some of the the some of the uh, reference I was looking at, I might not be able to get this little bit controlled up here. I might just have like the coils go straight back and not do like kind of like these baby hairs here. Um, I may also do them as a uh, as a texture, but this is kind of like the idea that I want. Um, so I sculpted that out. And so the other thing I did, uh, so when I sculpted it out, I realized that the inside of this thing was like hollow. And I was like, okay, well I need, like I need that scalp inside of there. So what I ended up doing is I made like this little filler thing, this little filler head thing here. So then what I did is I took both of those and I just, So I booleaned these two things together. So if I turn on by boolean, so I took, I basically took and I carved out. So I combined my filler and my hair and I carved out the inside of this with the head. So if I turn my live boolean off, so basically the head is just like scooping out the inside, inside of that volume. So I have this solid volume. So my high divergence would be on the inside of this. My low divergence, I'll paint on the back side of, of that. So that's the idea behind that. So to make this uh, to make this um, actually stick, I went and just created, I did, uh, I think it's like live boolean, uh, where is it? Yeah, I said boolean, uh, make boolean mesh. I think I could have also gone in here and said, uh, boolean folder and it would have done the same thing but so as i did that it made this new mesh that looks like this and then i just went and and uh and cleaned that up so that's my that's my uh my hair kind of volume 
uh, velocity volume. So uh, I think I'm going to spit this out as its own uh, OBJ file. So I'm going to say do 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 export and let's go and navigate to my Houdini project. Geom, and we'll call this hair volume OBJ. Hopefully the sizing comes in properly. So up here, I believe I'm going to do a file. I'm going to go get that hair mesh. Hopefully everything lines up. Fingers crossed. Geo. Yay, everything lines up. Fantastic. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome sauce. That makes me really happy. Okay. So now I have this I have this hair volume that I can start to work with. So um, I am a terrible speller. <laughs> so instead of this divergence attribute, uh, calling it divergence, I'm just going to call it div. Because I don't want to keep typing divergence. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with this collision volume, but we'll, 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 we'll see. Okay. So, so I have my... I'm just going to copy this and bring it over here. Okay, so I have my head here. Let's let me check that one. I have my head here and my my hair volume here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an attribute transfer. So I'm going to attribute transfer. Uh, I'm going to make a, a div attribute on both of these. Uh, or I could just paint it. So I still have my ZBrush groups in here. Ah, I'll just paint it. I'll just paint it. So, uh, let's see. Divergence, it goes from... What did it say? It went from high to low. High pressure to low pressure. So... I'm going to make an attribute. Attribute create. I'm going to call this div. And div is going to be And on this one, div is going to be negative one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer. So this guy's going to go over here. I'm going to transfer my div from here to here. So some of my div will be negative one, and some of it will be one. So I'm going to do attribute. Actually, I'm going to do a div of zero, and I'll paint in the negative one. These should both be, these are point attributes, point attributes, I want to transfer So if I look at div, and so this distance threshold is always way too high. Yeah, 
that. So there's my div kind of coming in. So let's do 0 0.01. One. Cool. So there's my high uh, div value that's coming from uh, the division or not division uh, divergence. Like so, this attribute here, right? So this attribute is called div. So the question was, what at what's what exactly is being transferred? Um, generally, like when you're when you see people do this. Um, they're transferring like uh, they're transferring like color because um, you can see color but you can transfer anything you can transfer any attribute so I'm just transferring a that that divergence attribute so it's one here and it's zero everywhere else okay so the next thing I want to do is and I, actually I think it probably I wonder if I can just go ahead and paint this let me see if I can just paint this. I'm going to do an attribute paint. I usually don't do attribute paints. I transferred the data from one mesh to another. That is, that's super powerful to wrap your brain around. So basically what I'm doing, and this is, this is quite difficult to, to understand. Uh, let me let me back up a little bit. So, so let's say this is my scalp. So like this is this is the back of my this is the back of my head, the back of her head, right? A little ear here. Oh god, this is bad. Okay, <laughs> so there's her 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 scalp, and then. On top of that, sitting on top of that, is her hair mesh. Like this. Okay? So let's say that these things are sitting directly on top of each other. So what I did is I said, you, this, these points, have an attribute called div. And that div is equal to 1. I did the same thing over here. I said, you, these points on the hair part, also have an attribute called div. And they have a value of zero. So what the transfer attribute is doing is it's saying, it's looking at, it's like, okay, are you, how close is this point to this point? Right? If they're within a certain threshold, this distance, this uh, this uh, distance threshold. Then instead of making that div zero, get rid of that and then make that one or whatever this value is. And it's doing that on every single point. So you're moving, you're literally moving information from one geometry over to the other geometry. It's almost like infection, right? It's like if I have if I have my two hands, like this hand has uh, has a, a div value of one and this hand has a div value of zero and I go like that basically I'm taking I'm taking my div value of one and I'm I'm pushing it on to onto this hand so uh, this is what one of the most powerful things that Houdini can do between this and scattering and packed primitives I don't think any other software can do it as well as as, as Houdini can do this it's it's mind-blowing how good it is um, so I don't know if this is going to work, but you know, like I said, fortune phase is bold, always try new stuff, always continue to grow. Okay. So, uh, I want the attribute. This is going to be div as well. Oh, no, it's on the head there. I want to paint on the hair. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so I have my div. So I'm setting my div to zero here. And then here, I'm, whoa, 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 too far, too far in. <laughs> uh, so I want to, let's see, do, 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 div. Let me show that. Div. 
know why that's not showing, but I want to paint a uh, negative one back here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So I'm basically painting uh, where I want that velocity to start driving. So I'm, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is that, uh, is that um, my attribute transfer will wipe this out. So I'm not really sure what this is going to do, but we'll see. I don't think I have to get this super perfect because it's hair and it's going to be messy anyway. Yeah, let's just get it to a point where we can... Okay, so I'm going to do my attribute transfer and yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So we have some zero and I should have some one in here as well. Zero, negative one. one to the zero and negative one so I should be getting my highest value is zero okay So to visualize this, uh, let's see, to visualize this a little bit better, I am gonna turn this into a color. So I'm gonna say ramp from attributes, div, my low value is gonna be negative one. Not cooperating. Let's see. Oh, that's why. Should be getting colors here. CD. Red, green, blue. There we go. Okay. Uh so that's all one. So let's start to pull that down. Okay, so that is overriding that paint. So what I'll do is I'll move my paint down here. Oh yeah, that's working, that's working. So my negative one is purple, so that's down here. Uh, then it goes into this green, which is probably gonna be around zero because it's right in the middle. And then it goes and it sharply goes to a red. So it jumps from this green to this red. So it misses all that, but that's what I want, right? I want that uh, that divergence value. And I can always go back and just repaint that however however I like. So that's, that's working, right? So I have high value is red, low value is purple. That's what I want. So, fingers crossed, we'll see if I plug this into my velocity field here. Yeah, so that looks like it's giving me a velocity field. Yeah, so I have a, yeah, I have a collision and a bell. So I have a bell field. So now what I need, so I want to guide advect this. I want to advect these, uh, so basically I need guides to advect. 
And then on here, I believe I can say, bah, bah, bah. constrained advection, fill collision field, fill velocity field, follow skin, primitive. The hair should, should grow, and the question is what's gonna happen? The, the hair should grow out of the scalp following the shape of the hair, I believe. Uh, okay, let's see if that works, okay. So, uh, let's see, I need a, Maybe I can just use, no, I can't use that guy. So I'm going to do a hair generate. And that takes in rest skin, guides, and animated skin. So really I just need my rest skin, which is my genome. So that is going to grow guides everywhere. So these are going to be my guides. They're going to come in here. My skin is going to come into there. Skin VDB should come in from here. And then volume and collision should come in here. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all getting somewhere so it is it is flowing backwards we can see that it's it is flowing backwards which is good that's what i want um so we just need to fill collision field fill velocity field oh yeah look at that So I'm getting somewhere, getting somewhere. Keep segment counts. So for, let's see if I do, let's bring my density up. Okay, so getting close, like right, I'm getting, I'm getting this, this, this. It is flowing around. I think, I think I need to paint a. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to paint a. I think I need to paint a density map on my on my skin. Yeah. So actually, going back to what we did before, I can go the other direction. So uh, what I'll do here is uh, I have here. So if this is my hair and this is my skin, I will transfer density from this guy to that guy. So this one's transferring uh, uh, divergence and this one will transfer, like I'm, I'm probably going a little bit too ham on the uh, <laughs> on the proceduralism, but uh, it's fun. I enjoy it, uh, and you get to learn a bunch of stuff. So let's do this. Let's just clean this up just a little bit. And all the work we do down, uh, but so like the great thing is, is like all the work we've done down here is not invalid, right? I'm just figuring out a way to replace this. I'm just figuring out a very complicated way to replace this guide groom with this like wacky uh, guide advection. Uh, guide Invection stuff. And let me make sure I'm using the right uh, Guide Invex Groom Unpack Guide Growth Field
ability to use inside draw hair guides to generate VDB fields to affect hair through. Okay, that's a utility node. And if I can't get this to work, I'll actually go. I'll go and and uh, and look up. Uh, there is one like this one small kind of like section of a of a of a tutorial. Um, or like the the when they first rolled out the new hair system, they did it like they did it like super fast. It's like right in the middle of this one, and it, I was like, "Whoa, it's really cool!" And I tried to remember how to do it, uh, but I I do this so rarely, it's um it's kind of difficult to remember exactly how to do everything. So let's do that. Yeah. So what was I gonna do? Okay. So this guy. Um. So my density is gonna be a skin attribute called density. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna say make an attribute here on my hair called that's going to be called density and that will be one and just like I did before so I have this now I have a uh, here I have a uh, density and this one is going to be a density of zero and that's going to go so what I want to do is I want to transfer attributes from this density of zero to this density of one. So if we come down here, let's say points and density. I visualize density. Bring down this distance threshold. I don't know why my visualizers aren't firing off today. Cool. So there's my there's my hair density, and it's being driven by it's being driven by that hair. So wherever that hair is sitting on there, that's where I'm getting density. This will get plugged into my hair gen. So boom, there we go. So some of it some of it looks like it's on on the ears, but that's that's okay for now. Just want to get this working. So all this is is on the head, and then. No, uh, still kind of crazy. Still kind of crazy. Not too bad. I didn't know if it would work with this volume or not. If this doesn't work, I'm kind of getting like a kind of like a, like a Incredibles look going on here. So let's see. Uh, exterior band. Maybe I need a smaller voxel size. That could be it. My volume velocity may have been a little bit too coarse. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Bam. Oh, that's cool. For the win. Look at that. That's that's wonderful. That is wonderful. So that's what it was. My um so my voxel size was way, 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 way too coarse. So I didn't have enough resolution to uh, to generate. Uh, I didn't have enough resolution to pull this stuff around. I'm going to save this before something horrible happens. Control, save. And the cool thing about this is, is it's, it's still pseudo procedural. So if I wanted a different hairstyle, I could go and sculpt a different hairstyle bring that in and all this well maybe my uh, my paint my attribute paint will be a little bit uh off um but i would have to redo that so i can figure out how to do that procedurally as as well um so maybe 
instead of painting that whole back with uh, negative one, Maybe I just need to paint. I'll put a hole in the middle of this. Let's see what that does. Okay, so they're hitting and they're kind of sliding around now. So maybe. Let's go back to my attribute paint. So this is the cool thing I like. I like that I can I can experiment with this and just see what everything's doing. Negative one. I could probably randomize it. Um, I'm trying to get just like the overall, and I will eventually do a uh, kind of like a um, uh, maybe I'll probably do some guide processes because it's really smooth right now. Um, so maybe if I go the opposite direction and kind of limit this to a smaller spot in the back. See what that gives me. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Oh, actually, that's that's actually really good. That's working very well. Getting a little bit of a, like, like a Baba Yaga from... Uh, from uh, from Spirited Away, but it's a good start. It's a good start. Okay, so let's limit length. Oh, there we go. So I limit if I limit the length, as soon as it hits that back wall, it stops growing. And I'm even getting like these little baby hairs up here. So now, actually, I might be able to up my density. I'm getting like these little hairs up top. Oh, and even I'm even getting like these little ones on the side, like these little baby hairs on the side. So I might not need this many, um, but it's it's a it's a good it's a good start. It's a really good start. So let's see if I can if I can see this. Let's just see. Yeah, look at that! Wow, that's that's wonderful. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, all right. Um, let's see. What else can I do to this? Fill velocity, fill what other constrained invection. Collision field. I think field velocity field is going to be my best bet. segments so if I say keep input segments or if I say adaptive so if I do adaptive that seems like it's doing kind of like a uh, feels like it's doing a um, like a resample so I don't want that well I'm probably gonna resample them anyway let's do keep input segment count and my input segment count right now is I think I have it at 16 eight so let's do 16. I think that's what I started with before. So I have to remember, I have that band, that band that's gonna come around the front anyway. 
Okay, I like where this is going. I like this. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so, let's say these are our guides. So I'm getting a skin prim and all that as well, so I don't have to do this guide lookup anymore. Um, let's clean this up just a little bit. So I don't think, so basically this guy here, uh, man, I could totally use this for a jellyfish project idea I'm studying for. Oh, that's cool. Hello, Brawlymation. <laughs> How are you doing? Welcome, welcome to the stream. We've been doing some crazy, crazy hair stuff today um, that I'm super happy about. Uh, okay, so I'm just kind of cleaning cleaning this up a little bit. I want to make sure that this is as clear as possible when I come back to it and I don't come back to just a random thing of spaghetti. All right, so this node has replaced more or less this node. So I'm going to say color that green. So now what I can do, I'm going to steal. So I don't need the mirror. I don't need this guide lookup. I do need that rest attribute though. So I'm going to rewire from here. So this is guides is going to go into this rest. So that should give me rest attribute and then most of if not all of this stuff down here is going to scoot over okay so into my hair gin uh so let's see rest skin so i'm thinking this is going to be my skin here so this is going to come out into my rest skin and then i don't have an animated skin i don't think skin vdb animated skin so i don't need that oh that's because that was coming over there So actually, I don't think I need this hair generate either. Because that's just making more strands. I already have enough enough strands as well. So I can kind of ditch that guy as well. So here, now this is going to be guides. So this is guides is going to come down into here. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be skin. 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 Skin is going to come into here. And then... This is my skin VDB, which is coming from skin VDB here. So yeah, don't need any of that. It can all go away. Awesome, cool, cool. Now that looks crazy, but it's doing exactly what it needs to do. So let's do, um, let's turn off the frizz. And let's say instead of set, let's do multiply. So that should give me variation in scale or variation in length overall. Okay. And I can make some of them longer and some of them shorter. I don't want to go too long. All right, and then my frizz is way too frizzy. Um, I think my 
amplitude is way too high. So I don't know what I have about a CG spectrum. Uh, is that CG spectrum diploma still valid in industry or no? Oh yeah, it's totally valid. Yeah, completely, completely and totally valid. Um, especially for uh, for all of our stuff. Um, all our stuff, we, we just become a Unreal partner, which is amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's totally valid. Why do you ask? Uh, just out of morbid, morbid curiosity. Okay, so I'm gonna say, let's see. This will be a little bit. All right, cool. Okay, so now, uh, so now we have our, our curves. We have our sample resolution, so that's going up to 200, which should still be sufficient. Maybe it's a little bit too much. Uh, we have our two. And let's see what we get out of our Clumping. So once again, my test was really, really big, so my amplitude needs to come way down. And actually, this guide process is kind of abstracting what I'm trying to do. So my amplitude needs to come way down, and I think my frequency needs to come way up. Oh, yes. Look at that. That is wonderful. That's amazing. So let's bring that back. Oh, that's stunning. I couldn't have asked for, for, for better than that. Um, so once again, I think I could probably just go into my, my hair gin here. So my clump crossover is probably way too big. So that's my, that would be my overall hair, but I want to go over to here and I want to look at the skin. So this is probably way, way, way too big. So let's bring our P scale down more. So some people want a diploma because they want a visa to work in countries like the USS, USA. Oh, is the hair getting really good? Oh yeah, it's getting, I'm, I'm super stoked about what this is doing right now. So I think it's, it still feels a little long overall. I might have to bring up that frequency a bit. It's feeling a little sparse. Okay, so I might need either to, let's chill out this guy for now. I probably need to bring up the frequency of my curling even more. Yeah. bring back for that attribute noise for the P scale. I think maybe my attribute noise is a little bit too aggressive.
think also overall. So now it's just, it's, it's tuning, right? I'm tuning, it's our direction. Just trying to get it to look. Uh, maybe my amplitude can come up a little bit, give that a little bit more full, fuller look. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, so, uh, so, how did uh, Sir Santo? How did you know? Where are you guys from? I'm from India, Brazil. Cool. <laughs> uh, I actually live in Hong Kong right now, so that's that's pretty cool. We're getting a bunch of people from a, a lot of different places. So this is actually looking not too bad. It's not too bad. I kind of don't like how it's all kind of converging back here, and I'm getting some some baldy spots. But in general, for you know, for a half an hour. Of work I am not mad at this at all at all so um, let's see if I I'm just gonna steal this and see what the texture looks like on it oh wait no I don't have to steal that because should already have it here That is not bad. I think the coils, I think they're still a little bit too big overall. I think they, the amplitude needs to come down, which means I need more of them to fill in some of this space. So let's do that. Uh, let's go up here to, so this stuff I don't need. That was just for gables. And I could even in uh, after this uh, after my guided vent here, I could come in and do a like a little guide process and kind of sculpt sculpt those out. But I want to try to keep it as uh, as uh, as procedural as I can. So. Yeah, the Kowloon, Kowloon's great. Like, there's so much great opportunity for, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, for uh, photography here. It's amazing. It's amazing. Just huge picturesque views. Okay, so let's bring my amplitude down. I want smaller coils overall, which means that, let's get rid of this, which means that I'm probably going to need more hair overall, which means that my original hair gen, I'm going to need more density there. Feeling a bit better. So with that, I can probably do my guide process and go a little bit bigger on my, my frizz, I think. That might help fill it out a little bit. Yeah, that helped fill it out a lot. And I'm still getting, do I have something turned on up top? I'm still seeing my, um, my inner curves or no that's a uh, I think that's the uh, that's not my shading let's just go back to my yeah, 
looks like my but overall I'm super like this looks really good I'm surprised at my own talent uh, that sounds really cheeky but uh, that's actually pretty nice um, it, this is way too heavy though um, looking at this this is like super super heavy uh, but it's pretty cool that I can do it um, in, you know, a half an hour. So that's a pretty, I think this is a pretty good stopping point. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's look at this with the head and see what it looks like. Uh, what else do I not need? Oh, that could be why. Uh, let's see. Skin, skin VDB. Okay. I don't need, let's just clean this up one more time. Let's get rid of that. Sure those are going in the right spot that's my skin this is my skin vdb yep that's all going in the right spot uh do 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 do, do. i agree it is dope plus uh let's do just real quick we'll grab some of that attribute noise Element size is a little bit bigger. Fill out some of that. Put some randomization in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's wonderful. That's good stuff. And maybe I can pull this back just a little bit. Still, they're all still kind of converging in the back there a little bit too much. Pull this back just a scotch. Maybe too much. Uh, let's do uh, point oh. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to, let's view our geometry. So we're getting some drawing errors, but overall, I'm pretty happy, like this looks, not too bad. I'm not super angry at this. Like, so I think the scout that we're seeing through here is is a is an OpenGL drawing error because there's a lot of uh, texture sorting going on in here. Uh, let's actually just go back to the out here. Yeah. So I have to figure out a way to to optimize this. But for first pass, I'm super super happy with this. Like, this looks pretty cool. And uh, let's just go ahead and just, in the last three minutes, let's just go ahead and grab that band from ZBrush as well. And here, that band. Export and band. Probably have to expand that a little bit. Or I could also use this and just have it do, uh, have it um, cut out the density as well. I probably, I'll probably just re-sculpt this, this part to match the hair. Probably easier.
yeah, I'll probably just pull it out so that it's a little bit wider. But these little bits up front here, looking really good overall. Um, I gotta figure out a way to bring that density down. Um, I'm still not really liking how it's all kind of converging in the back. I kind of want it to go out a little bit more. So I could maybe do a guide process to like set the direction or, or bend it out or something like that. But overall, this is this I'm super crazy happy with that that guide affection uh, idea that worked better than I could have possibly imagined. And this thing's probably probably like millions of polygons. Yeah, it's like a million polygons. So that's gonna have to come down somehow. And this is probably why you don't see a lot of super curly game hair because it just takes so much work to make it look anywhere near acceptable. So yeah, uh, cool. So that's it for the modeling stream. Uh, keep tuning in on Wednesday as I'm going to keep making stuff. Going to keep uh, messing around with Houdini. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting into some Unreal Engine stuff soon. Um, you saw I touched a little bit on uh, ZBrush today. Surface Designer, Surface Painter, everything's a toolbox. Um, everything's solving problems. Uh, yeah, so um, cool. Thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, engaging. And uh, I'll see you next week. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. Wash your hands and be safe. I uh, will see you next week. Bye-bye.